Have you seen some of these solar trailers going up for auction? Frankly, they look pretty good. Plenty of solar panels, generator, batteries, inverters, everything you could want for one low price, which unfortunately has usually been around $10,000. But I've seen some of these being resold for as much as $25,000. I like the concept, but was wondering if I could do something similar for a whole lot less. The whole idea here was that I already had some used solar panels and just a beat up old utility trailer. So the first thing I did was I mocked up some uprights with 2x4s, put a piece of PVC, PVC pipe across it, which I already had, and then I also had a piece of cardboard that was used between the layers of solar panels, so it was the same size as a solar panel, so I mocked that up. After that, I laid out the solar panels and measured them. Uh, I wanted to see how many I'd be able to fit on this trailer. They're about 39 inches each, so it comes to just a little shy of 10 foot across for three of them. Now what I have here is some inch and a half uh, pipe clamps, uh, typically used for mufflers on cars, that sort of thing. And those fit really nice with inch and one quarter black gas pipe. Uh, it's like they're made for each other. So here I drilled a couple of holes and ran that U-bolt through and clamped it on. I also experimented with welding that in place as well. Uh, certainly between the bolts and the welding, this was not going to go anywhere. Uh, I don't claim to be the world's greatest welder. Um, these are pretty ugly welds, but it's really, really solid. Uh, then I drilled a couple of holes through the steel and through the aluminum frame, making sure to stick a little block of wood so that I wouldn't go all the way through into the solar panel. Uh, I don't have level ground, so I laid out a couple of 2 by 4 screwed together so I had more than 10 foot length, just so I could lay out all the solar panels, make sure it was straight and even. Then I could start laying out uh, the pipe and the brackets as I was making them. Uh, here the gas pipe is just laid out, uh, just for alignment, see where everything should come to. Once I knew where it should come to, then I could weld the brackets in place onto these pieces of steel. Uh, right here you can see the markings that it's an inch and a half pipe clamp. And then I just uh, stuck these down onto the solar panels, marked them, made sure the solar panels were squeezed together nice and close, um, and welded up these pipe clamp, pipe clamp brackets. Uh, right here you see two of them, that's for between two solar panels. And here's the reverse side with the holes where the U-bolts will go through. So here I got everything all clamped together. I'm bolting things in uh, and now putting in the pipe and getting all the U-bolts in place. Here you can see essentially what it looks like finished with the clamps, the bolts, the pipe um, all hooked together. Uh, just need some paint here at this point. And now what I was able to do, since they were all together, is I tipped up the solar panels. I just leaned them against uh, my swing set here because I wanted to test um, how these would swivel. What I did is I had gotten a couple of caps for the ends of the pipes and I drilled a three-quarter inch hole through that, put a three-quarter inch bolt through there and a nut on it you see in the bottom left of this photo. And from there I put those through a bearing on a pillow block which you see at the bottom of the screen here. And after that just a little bit of paint. That inch and a quarter pipe, inch and a quarter pipe tap with a hole in it with a three-quarter inch bolt going through that, a nut, three-quarter inch uh, bearing and a pillow block and another three-quarter inch nut. And then once I had the bearings on there, I was able to prop these up onto some bar stools and test it out, see how it would swivel. Uh, one thing I noticed right away is, hey, the panels are still heavy and the way they're bolted on, it naturally wants to flip upside down, right? That's the lowest center of gravity. Um, also, I was trying to be real careful not to let these uh, come off the bar stools. Uh, it swiveled great though, with those pillow block bearings on both ends, very easy to rotate. Uh, but still not light, so a person definitely has to uh, hang on to the end of this. 
One thing I was a little concerned about was the apparent sag of the pipe when the panels were face down, but when I turned them vertical or upright, it seemed like that really wasn't much of an issue. Still, I don't know, maybe on the other side I want to use a little bit heavier pipe. Not sure on that one. The next thing was to work on the upright. I've got a three inch piece of iron channel going vertical here, just held in place temporarily with speed clamps. Um, I got that from a friend's scrap pile. Wanted to make sure it was nice and vertical and that included uh, cutting a piece of scrap metal to make a spacer because uh, it would not go directly against the corner. Have to space it out a little bit. Weld that in and then where this upright connects against the handrail, weld it in place as well. Up on top I cut a piece, drilled a couple holes and that's where the pillow bearing will go. And of course I'll be using all stainless steel hardware on this so it doesn't rust well outside. And I finally bought myself a little cheapy 6 inch cutoff saw. Uh, instead of just using my angle grinder with a cutoff disc in it, I bought a cheap little Harbor Freight uh, cutoff and I should have done this years ago. This thing is best ever. Makes nice clean cuts at right angles. So on the other, the other end here what I've done is I just cut a section of that channel to length. I just tack welded a plate on the end so it wouldn't fall off. Uh, clamped the other bearing in here so it does support it and then I've just got this temporarily clamped in place I'm gonna have to scoot it over a little further decide exactly where I want it to go uh, based on the length of our mount here so I'm gonna have to still move it over just a little bit more and then I'll weld it in place the other thing um, here is kind of the bigger concern really was on the far end you know, we had a part coming across here, it was real stiff, but over here, if I grab, if I just grab this and shake it, watch this flex, you can see that bend. So I'll definitely need to do some sort of cross bracing on this end. Now there does happen to be a mount right at the base of this, so I think I can put a cross piece out to the other side and then do a diagonal cross bracing right here. I'm trying to make everything as plumb level and square as I can, which is challenging on just uh, some old trailer uh, sitting on the ground. So I put my big uh, six foot uh, level across here. I got my little torpedo level over there and I'm using the trailer jack to level this direction. And I put my car jack down here for leveling side to side. And so I'm gonna level it and then uh, uh, stick a stand underneath there. Since the entire trailer was now leveled, it meant that I'd be able to use not just my square, but also a level to make sure that uh, the rear upright is actually straight, perfectly up and down. So here I'm taking off a little bit of the paint so that I can weld that in place after I leveled it. Now I'm cutting another uh, piece of flat material here. Uh, this is for the pillow block. And again, this little Harbor Freight cutter uh, sure is handy, I'll say that much. And it cuts straight. <laughs> it's nice to cut straight lines. And here we go with a little more welding. So here I've got that plate welded onto the end of my upright and this is where the pillow block bearing is going to go. It'll mount right through those two holes. On the back end of the trailer I've got my upright temporarily clamped in here and I've got my end cap uh, welded in place, primed it. Now I just set our big crossbar across here onto the pillow bearing. What I'm really trying to do is leave enough space so I can have a plate right here and a plate right here for a locking mechanism on both ends. So I probably have to put a little bit longer bolts in here. Like this one I've got out a bit just to make sure I don't shortchange myself but it's not sticking all the way through so I can't uh, hold it in place for the moment. <laughs> 
but I'll put longer bolts in there. Um, so for welding this in place now, kind of the big thing was to make sure that it's uh, vertical, you know, nice and nice and straight in both directions and that everything is nice and square. And now I'll hit it with a couple of tack welds and then I can take off all the clamps and weld it up. I also recently got myself this just monstrous uh, 30 foot NEMA 1450 extension cord. So now I can uh, weld somewhere else, like in my side yard, or uh, if I had to solve a problem with electric car charging, I've got another 30 feet, no problem. With the 20 feet on uh, most EVSEs, I got a 50 foot electric car charging cord. But I'll use this for the welder. Got a pipe end cap with a bolt going through it. Then I drilled a hole right in the middle of a four inch steel plate, put it on. I'm just trying to make sure it's nice and perpendicular for welding. So here's my idea for a um, locking mechanism for the tilt of the solar panels. Uh, this is one of the pipe end caps for the, you know, the main support here. And what I did was drilled a three-quarter inch hole through it, put a three-quarter inch bolt through it, and then I took a four-inch wide piece of steel, cut it to four inches long so it's square, drilled a three-quarter inch hole in there, slid it onto the here, welded it, and then I can take a nut, three-quarters nut, put this on. This is just to be able to tighten into our bearing. So now we can slide this through our three-quarter inch bearing put a nut on the back and should be able to snug it up and now that can spin but if I put a hole through it add a plate on this side so they line up with a hole and then I can put some sort of a pin through there maybe like this and then that'll lock it in place Now I'm going to weld on a piece of angle iron here with a half inch hole. This is just going to the main support and this is just a fixed location. So as that other piece rotates, put a pin through here and then it can't, it'll lock it down. So here it is vertical, ready for uh, trailering, towing off somewhere. And then once parked, ready to absorb the sun, that would be solid. And then this would lock into position on about a 45 degree angle. But it could go all the way out. Winter weather, steep, you know, low sun could be like that. But in the summer, probably something uh, so here we have just another angle for you to see how this rotates again this isn't like a solar tracker or anything it's just so the solar panels fold up for transport and then they fold out for actual use soaking up the sun I'll probably do both a summer angle and a winter angle on that lock there that I designed and then uh, this is only half of it 
Uh, there will be three more panels on the other side of the trailer, and they're designed so they're spaced out so that they will not hit on each other when they fold in and out. Uh, I hope you like this project, at least what I've got so far of it. Please uh, like, comment, share with your friends, let me know what you think of this, and if you subscribe, you'll make sure to get the next video in the series. And until next time, stay charged up. <laughs>